Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video I am taking a look at one of your designs that you have recommended me in the comments section of one of my videos. And for today I have chosen the Blizzard class heavy cruiser which is this thing right here because I am building a large ship myself so I thought it would be a good idea to see if I can steal some inspiration from other people. So this is the ship in its entirety. So it's got some ion thrusters, it's got some hydrogen thrusters, rocket turrets, gatling guns and a nice little bobble of a bridge at the very back there. So let's start by looking at the block count and then we'll go around the outside and have a little walk around on the inside before giving it a little thruster test. Pressing F10 and finding the blizzard, there it is, shining arrow is my ship that I'm building. Let's find the blizzard. There it is, this ship weighs in at not 12,686 blocks, no if I just copy it in this is actually 6,338 blocks in total. So it's not too bad, this ship as it stands is roughly a little bit smaller than my current ship in its unfinished state. So let's start by going around the outside. So at the very front here we've got some nice clean block skins with the hydrogen thrusters at the very front to make sure we can stop in a reasonable amount of time. As we come around the side here, we got an ion thruster just to help us out and above that we've got some rocket turrets above and below it. In fact, let me try and get the sun back around to make it easier to view. Uh, that's sort of good enough. Yes, we've got some rocket turrets above and below. I don't particularly like using rockets on large ships because there's always that risk of you damaging yourself. But anyway, the ion thrusters have been housed in the, some lovely little raised knobbly bits. So instead of having a flat block work with some slope blocks just to break it up, this one has little tiny rings that are just slightly higher to go all the way around, which does help out quite a lot to avoid being a plain blocky design. We have another large iron thruster which has been hidden away in there and up and above it in these little knobbly bits we've got some more iron thrusters. As we come across we've got two antenna to make sure you always know where you are. Behind them we've got two gatling guns and as we come further and further across and below we've got even more gatling guns, a small little doorway to get inside and coming around to here we have some hydrogen thrusters. Above that and towards the bridge we've got even more rocket turrets which I don't like how close they are to the bridge so all it's going to take is one enemy to be slightly above there and those rockets are going to pound straight into you. But yes we have some more of this little raised knobbly part going along with the iron thrusters being hidden away inside it. So there's some there coming across even more so. If you hear a bird outside it's being bloody annoying. I think it's on my doorstep. Anyway. Below that we've got some more thrusters set up, set up in a similar way as the ones above. So we've got two rocket turrets on this side, two on the opposite and gatling guns slightly towards the middle. Then if we come up and above towards the bridge, this is our little bridge. It's a tiny little thing where we have one flight seat and two control seats so you can have two passengers with you at all times. They can just manually take control of one of the turrets if they wish to do some precise aiming instead of letting the computer randomly fire in a general direction. Moving towards the back of the ship we come towards our main thruster which is this thing right here which has been housed up. From what it looks like it's going to be split into four but as I come around the back it is split into four. So there we are, we have two large ion thrusters and five small hydrogen thrusters in each of these little pods and it does look good while you're moving when the blues and the yellows start to merge together. So that is how the thrusters have been set up and it's quite nice. Then we can come down below this, yes yeah, so if we come down below we can see we've got all the turrets are running along here, in fact let me just whiz this along. Some nice block work there just to avoid that blockish look so we've got some slope blocks just raising up a little bit and as we come towards the front we have some hangar doors which have been set up in quite a nice way when these doors actually open up in fact let me just peer my head straight through this you'd then come up to here and then move yourself along over to here so we have a little parking spot away from the hangar doors which is quite nice and the traditional hangar doors being in the walls and you come and plop here. This just means you can leave the hangar doors open and you don't risk your ships getting destroyed if you just wanted to keep it open while flying. And that 
is basically it. I suppose I could go around the top, but it's largely the same. There's me. There's our rocket turrets. We got some more iron thrusters. There's the antennas. There's the gallon guns. Then we come across some nice block work towards the bridge. And then behind that, we can see our thruster housing, which is split into four separate thrusters. So now it's time for me to take control of my character and get into this ship. So coming across to this door over here, this is how we're going to get in. If I just move back, there it is. It's just on the side there and we have double doors, which is for our airlock. So coming inside here, close that up. We do not have a script active to close up the doors, or at least I don't think it will. Hold on a minute, it's proving me wrong there. So that's open. Hmm. Maybe, oh, there we go. It takes a little bit of time, so it's not the actual airlock door where you had to forcefully close this door before you can go into this one. It looks like it's been done on a timer block. Once it's been open, it'll close after a certain amount of time. But now we're on the interior. If I just close off my light, this is our interior lights. So we've got a few ways to go. The door on the opposite side will take us to the other side of the ship. And then we've got door forwards, door backwards, and we can come down these steps. So I think first of all, if I just make sure that's the right way, yes, let's come through this door here. So we've got our sleeping area, our little recreation area. We've got some DLC beds, DLC seats, and our kitchens. Yes, so we will need the DLC decorative pack. If you don't have this, this room's going to be pretty empty, but there's nothing too much to worry about. You can always download Ike's decoration pack and flesh out this room if you wanted to actually use the ship. So we've got our beds here. Just go take a sleep. Sit on these chairs, go and make your food over here, and they just, I suppose it's like a very casual room, isn't it? You just go and make your food, like blah 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 blah, then you go and sit on the chair rather at a table. Then we can come further back, we got the toilet to go into, yes, we got one of the little DLC toilets, which is quite nice. Close up that door and move through to here, where we have a projector, two air vents, and another seat. So this is an alternative way of flying the seat. If you don't want to be up at the bridge, you can come over to here and fly it in third person. One thing I would recommend perhaps is to add a camera at the very front so you didn't have to rely on the third person camera and instead view it in a more immersive way through a camera. Anyway, that is your alternative way of driving the ship. Nice and protected inside, surrounded by some armored blocks. Coming all the way back through here, we come back to our junction room where we can come down. Coming past all of these conveyors, now see, if they had that conveyor mod from yesterday, you could have hidden these conveyors on the walls and instead had it all snake down to where it needed to go, so it looked all pretty. But we can come down, we got some interior walls, here is our timer block which has been set up. So there we are, let's just go and set up the actions, what do we have here? So we've got the doors, this is a different language, a door and then the time block starts. So once you open up the door, it will trigger the time block, and after a certain amount of time, the doors will close. There is our gravity generator, so we don't fly away. And we've got some air vents up there. We come through here, we've got some refineries, and we've got some assemblers with some modules on. So if you want to do some quick bit of building, maybe you've done some mining, you need to put it into here. Or if you wanted to just build up some steel plates to do a bit of patchwork on the ship, that's how you do it. We then have some gyroscopes here. Not too many, but it is enough for this ship to be responsive while turning the mouse. But we can go further back. Further back in here, we've got some cryopods, we've got our medical bay to respawn on, and we've got a small little room over here. I'll talk about that in just a second. So we've got a door here, which is our little armory. Then we have a door here, which leads to a conveyor. It's like a prisoner room. You could set this up if you really wanted to, to lock the door. And now you have a prisoner trapped in here. They cannot escape. And yes, you could just transport them to where you wanted to go. Perhaps it could be a misbehaving crew member who needs to be put in the timeout zone. But yes, we've got some cryopods going all the way along here, which is quite nice. So if you did want to, you could put prisoners in there instead. Opening up this door and coming further back, we have got our hangar door, where we have one single button, where if we open it up, the hangar doors will open up. So yes, we've got this lovely big space here where we could just spawn in a smaller ship. Maybe I could fit in the blackjack. Might be able to, I'm not too sure. It could be a bit big. 
Yeah, I, I think that's a bit big to fit in here. So I won't be able to do that. Maybe I can just plop down the Dex Fighter. That's nice and small to put in here. Right, there we go. The game has frozen up quite nastily, so I'm hoping the actual audio hasn't gone out of sync. But we can just put in a little ship like that, and yeah. It's like a small little fighter bay where you could just deploy it out to here. And if you wanted to keep the hangar doors open, like I said earlier, there's no risk of this ship getting shot at, even though these are open. We do have a double hangar door though, just for extra protection from missiles. Anyway, I am just going to delete this. Let's just go and get rid of that. Just so it doesn't rattle around while I'm flying. Yes, it's a very spacious room here. We've got plenty of conveyors going all the way around. So if you did want to set up a small connector system, you could do that and it would go all the way through the ship to the cargo containers. So opening up this door and going all the way back to where I was, past the refineries. There we are, we're now in this room. I don't think I came through this area. I might not have. No, I, no, I haven't been through this area. So through this area, we have a few doors which will take us to the heart of the ship, where we have our reactors. We've got some air vents to make sure we can survive in here. Hydrogen tanked. Coming through here, we have another doorway with a ladder going down with the exact same thing. Then we come all the way to the very end, which is the proper way of coming in, where we can just drop down. There's our hydrogen tanks. We've got some jump drives, and we can just keep walking down. So walking around here. Yeah, we just access the jump drives do some repair work, and then moving all the way around. Yeah, we just do a bit of work. Just coming through to here, we now walk all the way back. All the way back through here, up the steps. No need to close the doors, because they'll do it automatically. And which way did I go? Yep, we've been in that way. Time to go this way. Opening up this door, we come to a impressive little walkway where we can see where we just were. So there's the hydrogen tanks, there are the reactors, and we can just walk around here. If you want to do a cheeky shortcut, you could just jetpack over and go down. But we can just keep walking around here. We have some ladders here to get up to our bridge, or we can keep going through this door, and we come over to some more jump drives. These over here, we can just walk around a little bit. There's some more gyroscopes. We can come down over to here, down this ladder, which would then drop us to basically where we just were and where we just ran through. Coming back all the way up here and dropping down, making sure I'm not going to go down that hole, we can then come up these ladders, climbing up it properly. Up we go, we can just look around here. And here we are. Yes, yeah, so while we're up here, we are out of range of the gravity generators, which does mean if we were to walk, we would clip onto the ladder and we could just walk down and come down here. So it's an express way down so you don't have to use your jetpack. But we can open up this door and we're now in the bridge we saw earlier. We can look out at the front of the ship. We can see the rockets. We can see the Gatling guns. And we've got two seats in here, two control seats. Nothing is on them, but you could, if you really wanted to, come and take one of the Gatling guns and take manual control of them. So here is this Gatling gun. I think this is underneath. Yes, we can just start shooting with that. If you wanted to do that, if you wanted to have some co-pilots shooting stuff. And then we had the seat at the very front, which didn't have anything on the hot bar. It was like this. So I added a few things on there just to spruce it up a little bit. So number one is to control the hangar doors. There we go. A captain should have control over the hangar doors to make sure he knows who's coming in and out of the ship. I added in two little controls for both the antennas, so if I was to put that on to full signal, we can then turn them on and off. So there's that. And number nine is to lock down all the doors by turning off their power. So if you get an emergency warning that there's a stowaway or a saboteur on the ship, you could switch off the doors and make sure they can't go anywhere anytime soon. Well, they could if they had the drill, but it's going to take them a bloody long time to get through those doors. So there is that. You could go one further and group up all the turrets. So if I was to come over to here and to find the turrets, they are in a different language, so it is a little bit different. So there's the rocket launcher turrets. We could group them up to say that and then just add them on to here and have them to be turned on and off. 
like so, which is always quite handy to have on your hotbar because sometimes you don't want it to shoot something, you instead want to go off and salvage it. But anyway, now it's time to do a quick little thruster test, and that will be it for this video. So going forwards, there's all the thrusters at the back there, they do look great once they're all lit up. It's just the merging of the colours against the blocks, looks great. So going forwards, we are quite slow, but it's serviceable for a large ship. Stopping is slow, so you will have to make sure there is plenty of room between you and your destination to make sure you slow down in time. Going left, going left is quite slow, and going right is exactly the same as you would expect. It does sound silly when I actually check the left and the right, but I do want to make sure that there are actually equal placement of thrusters on both sides. Anyway, going backwards is quite slow. And then going down is quite slow. Going up, again, is quite slow. But then again, like always, it suits a large cruiser ship like this. You are a hulking lump of steel floating through space, so I wouldn't expect it to be a racing ship and just going from 100 meters a second to zero in a few seconds. So wiggling my mouse around, like I said, we got a fair amount of control over this large ship. We have, I think, if I come over here and check the gyros, there we go, the gyroscopes. We actually have quite a lot of gyroscopes on here. Although not too many, it looks like quite a few of them have been deleted. So yeah, we've got a fair amount on here. And we do have a decent amount of control. I'm not going too far off my mouse pad to turn this. But yes, it does suit this size of ship. So to finish this off, what I'm going to do is activate all the turrets and see what happens. So that's what I was talking about, by the rocket turrets being able to hit you through here. It's kind of a ris risky place to be sitting. So anyway, that is it for this video. It's a lovely large ship. It's nice and simple and easy to work off if you want to turn it into something that you would use and just use this as a little template. And as for that, that is it. So it'll be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself. And I'll be back with another video somewhat soon. Bye bye.